Hey guys, Perry and Dennis here, and we have your non-spoiler review of the new movie, Logan Lucky. You happy to be here, Dennis? Yeah, I am happy to be here, especially when it's a movie that, that I actually care about. I was excited mm -hmm. to see it just because of Steven Soderbergh, and, and it delivered on, on what I was expecting. Yeah, so if you don't know too much about this movie, it's kind of widely known as Steven Soderbergh's first movie back from retirement, even though he was very busy during his retirement years working on other things. But it's about the Logan family. They have this curse on them. They don't do very well. They don't have very much money. So they decide to pull off a big bank heist. And that involves people, a whole bunch of crazy characters. Most notably, we have Daniel Craig's character, Joe Bang, who is a little something special in that movie. But before I get into my positives, I want to know some of yours. Uh, definitely, obviously, the direction. I mean, Steven Soderbergh, he's been doing this for such a long time. As you said, when he retired, re what he really did is he went to do uh, the television's Nick, The Nick, yep. which I actually think is one of the best, when it was on, it was one of the best shows on television. And he was able to shoot 10 episodes per season um, because he's so experienced and he knows what he wants. And you can tell that from this film. So you would see, like, there's no like fat on this on this movie mm -hmm. you you see exactly what he's looking for um performances were great i think it was well written yeah. it was funny it was charming a lot of the characters were good and and what i especially liked was we were seeing performances from characters like you mentioned or actors like daniel craig adam driver uh channing tim that you we haven't seen before these are different type of performances so you're not getting that one no oh he does this one thing and this is what he is in this movie mm -hmm. where I, I felt like we got a lot of different variety yeah no I think that's a, a pretty accurate way to break it down what I love most about Logan Lucky is this feels like a movie that would never have been the same kind of movie had anybody else directed it. The way he navigates from, and he kind of does this in his Oceans movies as well, he navigates between like, you know, really stylistic visuals and that kind of comedy to hitting more poignant moments mm -hmm. without actually being like, you're supposed to care about this. It just fits organically into that whole scenario. And I think that's why it resonated so much with me. Mm -hmm. When I was sitting there, I mean, I kept thinking the entire time, I'm having a whole ton of fun watching yes. it. But it was when I went home and I'm just, you know, like I'm driving home, I'm laying in bed at night, I keep thinking about it and I'm like, oh crap, who's my favorite character now? Because that's the kind of game this movie plays with your mind mm -hmm. when you're working with that group bank heist mentality is like, who is your favorite? And it's so hard to pick a favorite because each of these characters, they have similarities that would make you understand why they would come together and why they'd be in the situation together. But at the same time, they're all so different in a way that you're gonna gravitate towards one or another. and. I mean, it's it's hard to say that uh, that uh, Joe Bang is not my favorite <laughs> because not only is that character so so funny and entertaining, but you could just see that Daniel Craig is having a ton of freaking yes. fun being in this movie. He is sinking his teeth into that role. I don't know what was on the page. I didn't read the script, but based on how I can imagine it, it looks like he took what was on that page ran with it and took it to a completely different level. I found him so entertaining. Yeah, I, I think he's probably, you know, there's been a lot of rumors running around that he is tired of playing James Bond, but obviously that's where the paycheck is. So he probably was happy to be doing a role that was not that. And it mm -hmm. was something totally different with a totally different look and style and accent. And so, uh, I, yeah, you could tell that he was, he was having a lot of fun and he was putting everything in there. And even like uh, Channing Tatum, who like, you know, a lot of people give him crap for because just because he's done some like rom-com stuff and he's been great in comedies. But, uh, you know, I remember seeing him back in the day in a movie called Guide to Recognizing Your Saints with Shia LaBeouf and Robert Downey Jr. I thought about that movie in a while. Yeah, where he actually delivered a very good performance yeah. in that. And so this this is kind of a mix. There is some comedy in there with him, but there is some poignant moments with yeah. him as well. I mean, he's, he's pretty damn good at the deadpan comedy yeah. and so is Adam Driver in this, but... Channing Tatum is a really good leading man. And I'm not just saying he is a good leading man when he is like the suave action hero mm -hmm. or the lead in a rom-com or something like that. He, he is just someone that anchors this whole ensemble so well, well where he straddles that line between the deadpan comedy and also not being as stupid as they're made out to be. Mm -hmm. It's like the movie has a lot of fun poking fun at itself while also making you respect the fact that a lot of the things that happen in this aren't completely 
like out of line and so zany that they don't make sense and they mm -hmm. make you want to make fun of the characters. There are points where, you know, especially uh, Joe Bang's brothers, who I really enjoyed. Uh, the only one that I recognized was uh, was Jack Quaid because mm. obviously he's Dennis Quaid's son, but I had noticed him because I was really into Hunger Games and that was one of his first big roles mm -hmm. ever since then because he barely said a word in those movie in that movie. I have been waiting for him to do some more, and he he's funny. Mm -hmm. He's a funny, funny, funny kid, and he's really good, and the way that, that those two brothers play off each other and then play off the other brothers, yeah. it brings a lot more out of that situation than I thought I was originally gonna get. Yeah, and you know, there's parallels people talk about because Steven Soderbergh directed Ocean's Eleven. Mm -hmm. This is his, if I could describe it, it's his Coen Brothers indie version of Ocean's Eleven. That's what I got from okay. it. There's this this comedy to it that seems a little like it could be over the top campy, but then it's kind of brought in with, with some drama yeah, and real like, character development. It's, it's true. It's like a little heightened, yeah. but not so much that it gets into that cartoonish territory. And one of the other things that I really admired, I guess particularly about the script with this, is that some characters for comedic effect flat out state why they're willing to risk everything and, mm -hmm. and rob this racetrack. But other ones, they don't have to say it out loud. You kind of get it organically through their interactions with each other, through their interactions with their family. And that's, that's a big part of the reason I think that this movie kind of, it, it's not just a fun watch, but it hit me after. It's mainly because of Channing Tatum's relationship with his daughter. Mm -hmm. Her name's uh, Farrah McKenzie. And this just goes to show that young actresses out there, they need to have their names said more often because I don't see her name on the Wikipedia page and she's very good in the movie. You should check out her performance. Keep an eye out for it, she's really talented. So I looked at the Rebecca Blunt thing and it, Steven Sarberg in an interview says, no, this is a real person. Mm -hmm. You just haven't met her yet and she's working on something else and she's a first time. Because Logan Lucky is her first script yeah. that's been turned into a film and supposedly once the the press tour starts with this thing that she'll be out and about on this that's, so that's something else i mean i hope to hear more from her about putting this together mm -hmm. and i want to see more from her now too uh wait we, we obviously have to include our negatives in this review mm -hmm. do you want to kick it off oh i'm trying to think of what my negative i really why don't you go first? Because okay. I'm trying to think of what my because negatives are. Because I do, I do have something in mind, and it's actually the opposite of what you said at the start of this mm -hmm. review. I do think that you could have trimmed about ten minutes yeah. off of this movie, and then, then it, it would have been like flying the entire time. And I'm not saying that because I was ever bored. I never looked mm -hmm. at my watch, anything like that. I really had fun every second of this movie, and it's the kind of situation where you've got really effective character building, a really interesting world that it's set in, where no matter what they're doing, you want to just hang with them. Mm -hmm. And there's also actually, now I'm not even getting into my con anymore, but there's also actually a lot of moments in this movie where, I mean, just going back to the film school days when mm -hmm. you're taught, you know, you don't have to show someone like leaving the room, closing the door. Mm -hmm. You could shorten it to pick up the pace. There's a lot of moments in this movie where you see something that they're doing play out from like step one to the final step. Mm -hmm. And even though that's a lot of screen time that it eats up, it's played up for comedic effect and it works really well. That's not the kind of stuff that I'm talking about, but you know, there's just a couple of moments here or there where you didn't necessarily need to see like the physical motions of getting from one place to another, especially towards the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple little beats there that could have been taken out just to maybe pick it up a little bit. Yeah, for me, yeah, I don't really have any huge negatives. I, the only thing I would say, and without spoiling it, is at the very end, they kind of try and set up like almost like it could be there's a sequel. And I, yeah. I, I don't really think I need a sequel, even though I really enjoyed this film. I don't think you really need yeah. a sequel. I, even though I love the characters, I, I feel like where they ended is fine with me, and I don't need, yeah, I don't need to see more. I would, would I see one if they came out? Sure, but I don't think we have to. That was my only other slight negative, and it's not uh, not the worst performance in the world. I'm not going to spoil what happens because if you didn't follow, if you don't like explore the IMDb or anything like that, it is a nice like oh kind of moment towards the end of the movie. But there's one character that feels like 
it came from another movie yeah, with another yeah. tone and it didn't quite work. It doesn't ruin anything. It's just it noticeably sticks yes. out like a sore thumb. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now it is time to score this thing. Oh, man. I think I have to give Logan Lucky an 8.5 mm -hmm. out of 10. I'm giving it an 8.5. You know, I, I don't like to assess one movie compared to another, but given the similarities, it's hard not to think about how I reacted to this versus how I reacted to Baby Driver. Mm -hmm. And I think what Baby Driver did that this doesn't do quite as well, and again, I'm not saying this movie does it bad and that movie does it well, just not quite as well, is I wasn't as invested and mm -hmm. attached to Channing Tatum as much as I was to Ansel Elgort, where I really, I really loved that character. I wanted to see him succeed to a, a little mm. bit of a higher extent. So I think that's why I would pick that over this. But this is a, a fun, fun watch. And it's really exciting watching a filmmaker, especially one like Steven Soderbergh, do something that he, he so clearly believes in. He wants to do his way. And in a way that is similar to his past work, but also taking it in new directions. I think this is the kind of situation where... You know, you don't want to see a filmmaker kind of retreading his mm. his old stomping grounds kind of thing, and and that is what this is to a point. Yeah, but, but it's in a, a different way. It's in a very different way. That's a very difficult thing to achieve, and it, it you know it kind of makes me want to go back and do you know an Ocean's Eleven screening paired with Logan Lucky, and mm -hmm. just just find those little minute details yeah. that similarities, make it, differences. The, yeah, yeah, it's a, a really exciting thing. So I highly recommend it. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I think I, I enjoy this more than you. Uh, I, I'll, I'm gonna give it an 8.8 .8 and uh, I think I'm a, opposite of you where I like this actually more than Baby Driver and I, I felt more connected to uh, Channing Tatum's character than I did with Ansel Elgort's. Also I, I did find the ending in this film to be uh, better than than Baby Driver. I thought Baby Driver's ending was a, a bit messy uh, where this one I, I felt wrapped up a, a little tighter for me. This, uh, is, this is my let's not get into that phase. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah overall I think it, it, I think I highly recommend this film. I think it's uh, well directed, well acted. It's funny. There's a little bit of drama to it. You'll like the characters. It's very interesting. You know, it's it's not like a new take on heist films. We've seen heist films before, but it's it's so well done. I, mm -hmm. I, I think people should definitely check it out. And the cast is great as well. So there you have it. That is our review of Logan Lucky. Did you see the movie? Please tell us what you think in the comment section below. When you do, we want to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Dennis, where can everyone find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG, and you'll find me on Movie Talk on Fridays and Mailbag, obviously, on Saturdays with you, uh, and then sometimes on these reviews. Yeah, and you can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at PNMRuff. Please be sure to keep an eye on the Collider Videos YouTube channel because we are going to have a ton of reviews coming your way real soon. Bye, guys.